what's up guys it's your girl sb also known as guacamole guy and today we're back with a very highly requested video so as you all may not may or may not know i just had a baby she's one years old and um on our journey we've been breastfeeding for about 16 months now so a lot of people were asking me about tips and suggestions about breastfeeding so i posted on my instagram asking people like what questions they wanted to know i typed up a list first of all i lost the list but then i tried to remember some of the stuff and hurry up and write it down so there could be some few, some questions that i missed but overall i think i got most of them so Prior to even wanting to even have a kid, I always knew that I wanted to attempt to breastfeed. Like, that was just my my go-to, my dream. Like, So, at first, let me just explain how my breastfeeding journey went before I get into the question. So, at first, my daughter was sent to the NICU. So, I had to pump milk and then send it downstairs for her. Once she was released, that's when I practiced breastfeeding. So, at first, when we were in the hospital, she latched perfectly. But at the same time, I was a little tired and doped up. So, she did get receive formula while we were in the hospital. Once we got home is when I stopped the formula. But, um, so she did receive formula. It is okay to give your baby formula and breastfeed, which a lot of people don't know. Some people think that you have to be like strictly formula or strictly breastfeed. And no, you can flip flop and mix it up. You can do both. If that's if that's your preference, if that's what you want to do, if breastfeeding becomes too much for you, if you have to go to work, if you're not physically able to do it, like you can do both. So once we got home we had so many issues with her latching like she wanted me to pump like she was refusing formula she didn't want to latch but she wanted breast milk so i had to literally pump and then give her the milk and because i wasn't producing that much at the time and i did i lacked so much knowledge at the time it was just a hot ass mess to the point that i was just like i'm gonna just stay home so eventually we got through with um, side lying. If you lay on your side and have your baby lay on their side and breastfeed, that is the thing that, that's the position that I use to get her to breastfeed to eventually latch on and not reject it. Uh, there's a football position there's the normal cradle position so you literally breastfeeding is not a, just a one way one step one minded type of thing like you literally have to try different positions different methods different pumps until you figure out what works for you it's a lot of people ask is breastfeeding easier than formula no it's not it's not as easy but it does has its perks like in the middle of the night i didn't have to get up and make a bottle i just had to uh, whip my titty out <laughs> and keep it moving but then there are other sides of breastfeeding that may seem more difficult so breastfeeding is not for the weak but at the same time it's 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 not that difficult okay so that's my whole introduction so let's just get right into these questions that um so let's get right into these questions so the first question is did breastfeeding hurt um at first yes i'm not even gonna lie and it's not even the latching part and it's so weird because this thing happened to me and i saw it happening to me and then i was in this breastfeeding group and the way this woman described it i'm like oh my god yes so it's like this thing where your areola starts having this line of separation to i guess it's like your breast getting ready to be officially a bre uh, like a pumper so it's like probably like a week of pain that you experience of like your your areola having this line of separation 
and then after that week it doesn't hurt anymore but latching and the baby sucking none of that hurts none of that hurts pumping none of that hurts but it's like a week i want to say like probably two or three weeks after you have your baby your your breast experience this like line of separation type of thingy like if you know you know it's like one of those things i can't even really explain it either happens to you and you peep or like you don't know so that's the only part that was pretty painful it lasted about a week and then that was it the next question is was breastfeeding difficult um it can become overwhelming. I won't say difficult, but it takes a lot of patience. If you don't have patience, it's not going to work. Because for one thing, breastfeeding another person, having them sit and lay on you, it's just it's mentally a lot. And then breast pumping, cleaning those parts, storing milk, measuring milk, labeling milk. It's just a lot. I won't say difficult but okay so to me difficult is like it's really hard to do and then a lot it's like it's a whole bunch of little steps that's easy but it's a whole bunch of little steps and I think that's what breastfeeding and breast pumping is it's not difficult it's just a whole bunch of little steps <laughs> that um you have to do next question is how often did you pump so at first I was on a schedule of pumping with my baby um, every time she was hungry because that's the way she was receiving it at first. But then I started going on a schedule of, so at first I think it was like every three hours she was eating. So I, that's, I would pump every three hours. But then I started doing every two hours to get that in between milk that I could store. So. The next go around when she was hungry, her dad could feed her through a bottle and I could get a break. And I think this is the most important thing that a lot of people don't mention is that if you cannot physically breastfeed, meaning your baby has latching issues or you don't feel comfortable breastfeeding, but you still want to give your baby breast milk, you can breast pump. And I didn't know this until I really got deep into the breastfeeding community and joining groups. But there's breastfeeding and there's breast pumping. Some people exclusively breast pump, meaning their baby has never drunk milk directly from their breast. And then there's some people that exclusively breastfeed, meaning all the time their baby takes the milk from their breast. And then there's me that did both because... I went to work. I wanted my partner to help out. At first, my baby was having difficulty with even wanting to stay on the breast. I won't say she had a latching issue, but she just didn't want to breastfeed. But she was going to get that breast milk, okay? So, I started breast pumping, and then I started breastfeeding, and then I did the mixture. And now, I'm back. Like, because we're wrapping up our journey, I just breastfeed her whenever she's sleepy, but... I no longer breast pump anymore. So there are different ways to still give your baby breast milk without just completely giving up on a journey. And I feel like a lot of women give up on their journey because they're like, oh, my baby's having latching issues. Oh, it's not working. Oh, it's not going. Like, no, keep trying. Like, you can supplement with milk if you want, but also keep trying. And also, there are a lot of women who donate milk because they're overproducers and they have like big freezers full of milk. They go get their blood work done and tested to show you that they don't have any diseases. And you can either find them on a Facebook group or on a donor site or wherever and they'll be able to donate their milk to your baby for free. So there's so many different ways that you can receive breast milk if that's the route you want to take for your child are the benefits of breastfeeding so i know it's eczema it's an eczema killer um reducer i know it reduces the okay so i know all of these things you know how doctors say it's not a hundred percent listen i'm not a doctor i should have said that at the beginning i am not a doctor this is my opinion what i've learned from friends what i've learned from lactation consultants what i've learned from nurses i'm not a doctor anything i say is not 100 percent guaranteed it's not i'm not a doctor 
but some of the benefits is it, it reduces ear ear infections i don't think my daughter has ever had an infection ear infection she has never had a cold um it reduces colds it reduces um the chance of having cysts it reduces the chance of getting diabetes um it increases brain development um it says that babies that are breastfed usually have a higher iq um yeah for the most part that's it and then it's also breast milk is also like a healer so so far that's the only thing that has been known to kill COVID-19 and my daughter had COVID twice and got rid of it just by breastfeeding um she's never had an ear infection she's never had a cold she's never had any of those things and I think it's all in part into breastfeeding and that's another reason why because COVID is still out here and moving and grooving I don't want to stop breastfeeding but I do but I don't because she got rid of her uh COVID in like three days so just off me breastfeeding because she was refusing to eat refusing to drink juice or anything so she was just breastfeeding and got rid of um COVID-19 so that's the reason why I low-key want to keep it around but we gonna see i've been low-key trying to build up a freezer stash so um when we part ways with breastfeeding when she gets sick i could go, just go and defrost some milk for her and give it to her that way um the next question is what pump did you use so i used three pumps at first i used the Medela pump which I got for free with my insurance if you want to know how to do that definitely click the description down below and I have the link to my video on reviewing the pump and how I got it for free using my um, health insurance number two was my willow pump it is a wireless pump I used it um, mainly because I got tired of just sitting there in a corner trying to pump and not being able to do other things like clean up and move and because at that age your baby nap is about an hour so if it's taking me 45 minutes to pump i i have have 15 minutes to even take a shower and try to clean up a little bit before she wakes up again so i got the willow pump and it was a lifesaver i loved my willow pump love 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 loved it and then the third one was my manual pump by Medela, which i received one free at the hospital but then i misplaced like a part when i was cleaning it so then i had to go and buy another one and this one was from target and i believe it was like 49 dollars. and it's just a manual pump meaning you have to pump it yourself and honestly this is the best pump out of all the pumps i've tried listen other women used to say oh my god screw all those pumps just get you a, a manual pump just get you a manual pump and i was like girl bye how this little thing on compared to my 500 hundred dollar pumping machine you get what i'm saying it was just like no they was right this and it's so crazy because most of the stuff that I learned from breastfeeding, I learned from my best friend who had her baby a year prior to me. And she swears by a manual pump as well. So, <laughs> that's just the crazy part of it. So, someone wrote, my breast doesn't feel empty after breastfeeding. What should I do? So, if your baby drinks the milk from you, right, and you still feel like your breast is full of milk, pump, sis, pump, pump, pump and freeze it, um, pump and use it to make soap pump and use it to make a oat bath pump and store it pump and save it from when you go into work a uh, pump so when you have a visitor come over they can feed her and you don't have to be like oh you know give yourself a break so if you're still feeling like there's milk inside your breast but your baby is full pump so someone else said my baby is drinking but he is not full what should i do so this is something else i had experienced so say for instance it's time for you to pump on your left side of your breast last time you pumped on the right i mean not pump but breastfeed so you breastfeed your baby on the left and still cranky still hungry still whatever switch and breastfeed the baby on the right side sometimes one of our breasts can produce more milk than another one they call it the 
forgot the name. I forgot the name. Crap. But I forgot the name. But to me, my overproducing side is my right side. My lower producing side is my left side. So anytime my baby breastfed on the right, she will she would drink all the milk and be full and whatever. Anytime she breastfeeds on the left, she'll be cranky. So I have to go back to the right side and breastfeed on this side until she's full. And then voila. So try to breastfeed from both sides before supplementing. And if you have to supplement, it's okay. It's okay to breastfeed and still have to supplement by giving your baby formula. That doesn't mean you lost the race. That doesn't mean you didn't commit to breastfeeding. It's okay to supplement if you need to. Like the goal is not to just be so stuck to I just want to breastfeed. No, I want to feed my baby and keep my baby healthy. So if I have to breastfeed from both sides of my breast and still make a bottle fine if i have to breastfeed from both sides of my breast and still defrost some old breast milk that's fine too like whatever works for you like that's my goal that's like everybody is like oh can tell me the tricks tell me the the tips whatever works for you works for you just go buy it no one cares as long as your baby is healthy and happy and you are healthy and happy that's all that matters so my next question is uh what if my baby wants to breastfeed in public listen anybody that knows me knows that i did not want to breastfeed in public and it's so crazy because like when you hear people talk about you and they're like oh yeah my baby is hungry so i just i just breastfed them and people had this to say it's just like girl yeah breastfeed your baby feed your baby and then when it's your turn to be the one that it's like you get a little bit subconscious so at first i did not like breastfeeding in front of people in front of large crowds like i would breastfeed if i was like in my friend's house or you know something like that but to breastfeed in a restaurant or like a party or like a store i was just so paranoid until one day it was my friend's daughter my best friend's daughter her birthday party and my baby just kept crying it was like what's wrong like she's hungry and all of them were like it was like three of them that had breastfed their babies they're like girl if you don't whip that thing out nobody don't care like no one cares the people that care are weird so they're like just go ahead and whip it out like your baby hungry what you gonna do just not feed your baby and, we, and they were like we're just gonna sit here until you feed your baby <laughs> i'm just like okay whatever so then after that girl i only had one experience and then someone asked me that like have you ever had experience of someone walking up to you and telling you to cover up or telling you like eh and I'm like, no, I only had one experience and it was so crazy because I was in like, we have this thing called the flea market, right? So I was breastfeeding in a corner and it was this older man that was trying to like peep over and look and I'm like, you're giving weirdo vibes. Mind you, I'm breastfeeding by the barbershop and it's like teenage boys standing right there minding their business. But then it's this old, old man just trying to look and see and it was definitely giving creeper and also your baby might not like blankets my daughter will snatch a blanket off her head and throw it on the floor in two seconds so that was the barrier of breastfeeding that was hard to me it wasn't the fact that i didn't want to breastfeed it's the fact that she doesn't like covers and all that fancy breastfeeding equipment i bought to cover her up a waste of money because she would just throw it and then breastfeed <laughs> So definitely keep that. Should you pump and dump? Hell no. And I'm so sorry to say curse, but hell no. Never, never, never. It don't matter if you're drunk. It don't matter if you uh, took medication. It doesn't matter if whatever reason you feel like you hot. Like, it don't matter whatever reason you feel like it. Do not pump and dump. Here's, here's what you're going to do. Say for instance, you go out, you get drunk. Your breast is full. You're going to pump and freeze it, right? And then when your baby gets a rash or when your baby has any skin issues or problems, inflammation, sunburn, whatever, you're going to defrost that milk and put it in the tub when they take a bath. And when I say, thank me later, thank me later. Some people, um, 
use their pump and dump milk pump and dump milk to make soap some people like i know with alcohol you could freeze it and then the baby can drink it later but i know with certain medications it's a buzz so with that you just want to label in the freezer like do not drink or like whatever liquor you have soap only milk bath or whatever and then drop them things in the tub and when i tell you your baby's skin is gonna listen it 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 helps heal cuts and bruises and listen don't pump it up save the milk and use it for other things or you know um it's breast milk jewelry now a lot of women are celebrating their breastfeeding journeys by getting necklaces and and rings and stuff so send that milk to the people that make the jewelry and then there you go but all that hard work or either eating right drinking right being healthy and coming up with a routine and then you're just gonna dump it like never dump your milk never dump your milk never dump your milk i do not support pumping up at all at all not even in the slightest no unless you like your breast full and you out in the club and it's hurting real bad and you just gotta sit there and squeeze it out in the sink girl trust me been there done that you just gotta sit there and squeeze it out in the sink to relieve the pain because you don't have your tools and gadgets and gadgets with you that's the only other way i see pumping it up and gonna work other than that you better save it and i had a friend girl that was squeezing her squeezing her stuff right into a cup and took that cup home <laughs> so once you get into that journey and you realize how hard it is to pump milk and produce milk and all you put into it you gonna save you gonna say your milk. Almost my last question. How do you increase your output? Staying hydrated. Stay hydrated, stay hydrated, stay hydrated, stay hydrated, stay hydrated. Uh so what you wanna do is drink water or coconut milk. And a lot of like coconut milk is supposed to be um the thing that hydrates you super fast and super heavy. That's why a lot of people in the breastfeeding community swear by body armor because it has coconut water why am i saying coconut milk coconut water in it but my thing is i also swear by body armor but i would say to drink the low sugar no sugar body armors because those body armors are packed with sugar and it's a lot but body armors definitely stay hydrated body armor gatorade whatever stay hydrated um eat your three meals make sure you have your three full meals like you have to take care of you fully in order to breastfeed so you gotta make sure you put it in to put out so put in the water put in the food and the nutrition so you can be able to produce and come out um i would say make sure that your breast is empty make sure like i said earlier if your baby is feeding but the breast like i said earlier if your breast is um feeling full but your baby's done pump uh pump as often as you can um breastfeed as often as you can um it's this rule i forgot the name where like you you pump for 45 minutes and then you pump for 30 minutes so you pump for 35 minutes take a 15 minute break you pump for 30 minutes take a 15 minute break you pump for 15 minutes and you take I mean, and then you're done. And then you rotate that schedule. So I would say I tried that. And at first, it's not going to work. So at first, when you pump that first 45 minutes, nothing ain't going to come out. But it's just stimulating your mind and your body to know that, okay, you need milk, you need milk, you need milk. So then the next time, a little bit came out. And then the next time, one ounce came out. And then I kept doing it. And then it started producing full bottle milks. So... You have to like put your body on a schedule to produce it. Another way is like, say for instance, your baby drinks every four hours. Uh, you want to pump at the two hour mark. So pump. So one, two hours go by pump and then three, four hours breastfeed. One, two hours pump. One, two hours breastfeed. You get what I'm saying? Add in that extra pumping section to, to increase the milk flow and get things uh, going another thing is my lactation consultant um 
told me to start taking sunflower lychee and that worked leche thin i don't know how to say it i'll leave it in the description box but that worked and then i also the biggest thing the biggest two things try a manual pump a lot of these like i can say that i love the Medela and i love the willow they definitely was giving me five six ounces worth but once i started using my manual pump it was giving me like 10 12 ounces so definitely try to use a manual pump and see if that's the case and then the second biggest thing is to get measured get so these flange sizes come in like a standard size of like 22 and i believe 26 or 28 one of those so um your nipple might not be this size so i met with a lactation consultant and i'll leave her information in the description box but she measured my nipples and areolas and was ever and was able to give me a measurement of what size my nipples were so i was able to um it's these things called um pump insert so you'll take the insert and insert it inside the pump and then now it'll give your your nipples a more secure pump because if you let in too much air in and too much space it's not going to suction the milk see it's not going to suction it properly so you definitely need to make sure it's a tighter fit to suction it so definitely try getting measured and um i believe it was like ten dollars for measurement and counseling for two weeks and try getting an insert and sticking it in the pump and pumping that way and see if you see a difference and also my insert was able to go on my manual pump my Medela pump and my willow pump so they're very versatile but definitely try those things out first try manual pump and try insert try hydrate and try eating and try putting yourself on a schedule and uh, tips to make breastfeeding easier <laughs> that's all the stuff i just said another tip is when you're away at work say for instance make sure okay so this is going to sound really weird but it's going to work so when you're home make a video on your phone of your baby crying like say for instance your baby's crying one day before you pick them up make like a quick little 10 second video right so then you're gonna go home i mean when you go to work and you're pumping in your office and there's nothing going on and nothing of your baby play that video and it says something about how like it mentally stimulates from your like it's telling your mind that your baby is hungry so then your milk produces and that should help with producing and pumping at work because i know some women have that issue as well if you can't make a video make because like i don't know whatever reason take pictures and just look at pictures of your baby while pumping or watch the video while pumping and that should help you come over that curve as well i'm trying to think of like uh, oh the thing that i went viral for on tiktok so say for instance you got a clock duck um they have it now where you could buy like these breast massages and put them on there and it'll, it'll help you like get the clock ducts out but i learned to use a toothbrush a vibrating toothbrush or a vibrator which you both you probably got both at home so instead of spending a hundred dollars on some breast on vibrators that you have to throw away whenever your baby stop breastfeeding the journey don't last that long use two one of the two things that you probably already got that you use on a on a regular basis right so you want to put either the vibrator or the vibrating toothbrush in front of the no behind the clock duct it's either in front or behind i don't remember i think it's in front of the clock duct and it'll release the milk out so use a vibrator or a toothbrush if you're having issues with clock ducts and hot showers and hot steams and massaging it out does not work um a lot of people i got a lot of backlash off using the vibrator but why not or if you rich if you rich go go spend a hundred dollars or if not say for instance you don't have a vibrator um if you look on my tiktok walmart target walgreens cvs they all have like a vibrator section 
and they have like the little mini vibrators i think they're like 27 dollars you could get one of those and just put it on a duck and massage it out and then the milk comes out <laughs> at first people are like are gonna think it was you're weird but then you don't even have to tell people so girl do you boo to you so I just want to say thank you so much if you've gotten this far into the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below if you want to hear anything more about my breastfeeding journey or if you have any questions. Also feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at guacamole guy and don't forget to subscribe please. If you made it this far there's no reason why you're not subscribed. I'm on the road to a thousand subscribers so um, subscribe at the bottom. It's the red square is definitely free 99 so why not <laughs> until next time guys i definitely want to tell you thank you for watching this video because that means you're trying to become a better mother for your child and that's such an amazing journey and the most difficult part about this journey is asking for help so you did the most difficult part by watching this video and getting the help you need so don't forget um if you need help or if you need um, resources, definitely reach out to me and I'll be able to help you. Until next time, guys. Remember, if it ain't about welcome, God, peace.